this is by far uh, my favorite picture. Um, I love steel shots, and this one um, is great. I think that's carry on. Us and Piedmont went at it for like two or three straight years. We went at it, and that game, they, they really should have beat us. They played better than us. We just had a better team. It was considered one of the, the wildest, craziest, exciting games in high school football in North Alabama history. That was a game of inches. Uh, literally, that was a back and forth game. We won in overtime, won on the last play of the game. That was a tough, hard fought game, and we ended up winning on a, um, I think they went for two to win the game, and we batted the ball down. And then you have, you know, 70 guys on our side celebrating, exciting, 70 guys on their side just, you know, deflated, crying, laying on the fields. A lot of them, just last game of, of high school football. You know, their players were all distraught, and so Carry On was just kind of comforting in this guy saying, you know, hey, I've been there, I understand it. I could see the hurt in his eyes. I was just letting him know, you know, this is not the end for y'all. That You know, you did all you could do, believe me. So, you know, I just took a little time out to kind of console him and try to help him through that time. I always like to make the point that Carry On wasn't the only player doing this, but because of who he was, he's the one that got uh, caught on camera. Uh, one of the Piedmont parents took this picture and sent it to our football office, the Madison Academy football office. Uh, just talking about how they appreciated, quote, someone of his status, uh, to, it showed who he really was. Uh, he cares about people, and uh, not just his teammates, but his opponents, and he respects the game, respects the opponent. A lot of people are like really surprised when they meet him that he's not cocky, you know, and not thinks, doesn't think he's better than everybody else because, you know, we always teach them that even though you play hard and we want you to win every time, you may not always win in the scoring. You know, you may win in other ways. And, you know, that could have very well been us that night. He's just always had a passion uh, for football and uh, it's what he wanted to do from day one. <laughs> so. I started playing football four or five. I played flag. <laughs> I started out as a, I'll never forget it. I started out as an old lineman, and um, I think we were either losing the game or winning the game really badly. And um, and they gave me a chance. At, they just gave me a chance at quarterback. And I did a quarterback keep and ran for like 50 or 60 yards, and I was running back ever since. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of football, you know, but he has always been probably the roughest one you know he would jump off the couch playing Ninja Turtles split his head so he's and when he played football he just loved it and I could never you know get him to change his mind and after a while I was like well he's just gonna play football he is really a perfectionist and wants to score every time he gets the ball so that's really what I noticed the first time uh, I, I actually got to coach him was uh, his confidence level was through the roof you know, I started getting really good at it, started having fun. I realized I was running the ball very well, and I was like, hmm, let's see how far it is to take me. Hey, let's have some fun, guys. Let's have some fun. Break it down. Hey, let's go, baby. We got a job to do. Let's go ahead and get it. He can make three or four plays that captures the momentum of a game and changes the whole complexity of a football game. Uh, he just takes over. We made it to state four straight times. We won three of them. And that was one of the best feelings I've had playing football. Oh, it's very special. Not a lot of teams have been able to do it, and uh, we can put our name down as one of them. So obviously, it's a blessing. Him stepping up and leading us that state championship his senior year, uh, being named Mr. Football for the state of Alabama, just kind of showed his progression uh, all the way through his high school career. He just got better and better, more and more dominant as he went. A lot of schools, I mean, obviously recruited him. I mean, he had people from all over the country. Florida State offered me, next day Alabama, next day Auburn offered me. So that's kind of how it all got started. Next thing you know, everybody starts offering you, everybody starts calling you, trying to get interest, and it came fast, that's for sure. With Carry On knowing in his mind what he wanted to achieve, 
and what his what his expectations were and what ours were as far as you know going to a good school this type of thing I think that made it a little easier we were able to narrow it down it was Alabama and it was Florida State those those were the two Auburn wasn't in the picture until they actually hired um, Gus Malzahn he called uh, we talked and he said you know we, he's, he's a priority for us yeah, he came to my school um, First, I'm like, dang, this dude's tall. Uh, I, you know, I, I'd never seen a college coach before, for real. like, not especially not that big time. And so, you know, he's coming off this huge season in 13 and stuff, and uh, it, it was huge. Yeah, we thought he was an excellent running back. He kind of reminded us of, in a lot of ways, Darren McFadden, who we had both coached before at Arkansas. He didn't have the, the straight line speed that Darren had, but he's actually a more fluid athlete, and he was versatile. He was long, big, long arms. He could catch the ball well. Uh, he really could just do it all. He, I mean, hey, he'd have been a great college safety and he'd have been a great college receiver. And so what drew us to him was just, just the incredible versatility he had to be a great playmaker, we thought. Not only was he raised the right way, but he was a leader. Um, he was a great student. I mean, it was just kind of one of those things where he checked every box of the intangible category as well. And I just think over time, we were able to develop that relationship where he trusted us and you know, felt like Auburn was the best fit for him. He called me one day right after school and he says, Dad, he says, I made up my mind. And I, I was in the car and I said, really? I says, where are you going? He says, where do you think I'm going? I said, I, I, I don't know, you tell me. He says, I'm going to Auburn. And I said, really? <laughs> and uh, he said, yeah. And I said, well, what is it? And he said, Dad, I, I know you've heard this. He says, but I can't really explain it. He says, I just feel at home. He said, I, it's just a feeling. I think that when we went to Auburn, it was like, everybody comes up and shakes your hand, you know, how are you doing? They know you, you know, and you talk about personal things. So it was the family. That decision, I mean, that, that holds a lot of weight of over your future of school-wise, football-wise, character-wise. Um, so, it, it, you know, but I, I was happy to put it behind me and uh, I felt at ease with the decision. I knew I made the right one. and never wavered and um, I had to make the best decision for me and that was Auburn and I, I don't regret that a day ever. I'll be on the planes next year. And it made me feel good uh, just to know I can do it. Uh, you know, you always believe you can do it, but to go do it is a different story. Uh, so yeah, that, that made me feel awesome.